Hi, I'm Tom Hagen. I'm a member of the McMath Hulbert Astronomical Society, and we meet here at the historic McMath Hulbert Solar Observatory in Lake Angeles, Michigan. And today we're going to show you our homemade radio telescope that we use to detect the emissions of the hydrogen gas in the Milky Way galaxy. That's our home galaxy. So what we have here is a representation of a hydrogen atom. This could be a hydrogen atom way out thousands of light years away in our galaxy. The hydrogen atom is the simplest atom. It consists just of one proton and one electron. The proton's in the middle and the electron is uh, here and it's orbiting the proton. The uh, proton and the electron have these quantum quantities called spin. This is uh, related to the uh, quantum angular momentum of each particle. Spin can have, an, have two directions. It can be either up or down. In the picture here we see proton. The proton spin is pointing up and the electron spin is pointing up. Now when the electron flips, it emits a photon of a certain energy level and that corresponds to a wavelength of 21 centimeters. When this flip happens, a photon is emitted and we can detect this energy on Earth from untold trillions and jillions of these hydrogen atoms that are out there in the galaxy. Okay, so here is the uh, radio telescope itself. We built this ourselves right here at McMath Hulbert in our shop. And this is an antenna called a horn antenna. And what it is, it's basically a funnel for radio frequency energy. We're trying to detect radio frequency energy that is generated by the hydrogen atoms in our Milky Way galaxy. That's our home galaxy. So when I point this up to the sky, the energy just falls in here and we can pick it up down at the end down there and we can detect the signal strength that way. So when we point it up, we can detect whether or not we're seeing hydrogen in the sky from the Milky Way. So if you come in a bit closer here, this is all, uh, all these materials are available at Home Depot. That's where we got them. The, uh, the, uh, the uprights here are uh, three quarter inch birch plywood. The base is made out of some aspenite that we had as scrap here. It's about 40 inches in diameter. On the top we have another plate that sits on the ground, circular plate. That plate has casters mounted on it so that we can uh, turn it back and forth in azimuth. The altitude axis is made up of these uh, toilet flanges, PVC toilet flanges from Home Depot, more three quarter inch birch plywood. The horn itself is made out of uh, one inch aluminum angle screwed together. The, uh, the metal here is uh, 26 gauge sheet metal. Again, all this is available at Home Depot. The uh, design of the horn itself comes from an organization that's been searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, extraterrestrial radio signals. I took their design, I modified it a little bit, I added this tailpiece back here, which is where the antenna itself is, so that I have a better uh, antenna pattern, a better pattern as it looks up into the sky. Again, to reiterate, this is basically it's just a sensor. Even though it's called a telescope, we don't make pictures with it. Okay, um, looking inside the horn, you can see how it's assembled with screws and it's held together basically by this uh, aluminum angle, this one inch aluminum angle material. On the corners, we miter the joints and we have double angled 
here all the way around so this makes the uh, the front end really stiff if you didn't do it that way this thing would tend to be a little bit floppy um, the pieces were cut with a uh, aviation snips so it is kind of a rough edge there but I uh, was careful when I built it to turn the rough edges inside so that you don't have the problem and then down at the end here this is where the uh, signal is detected and we have this little um, probe here that is uh, tuned to the wavelength of the frequency that we are trying to receive. That wavelength, wavelength is 21 centimeters. That is a uh, known emission line of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so um, here is where the active element um, comes out of the tailpiece here and it hooks to this piece of uh, coaxial cable and it comes out here and goes up here to this pre-amplifier which is a little amplifier board inside this this metal box here this board amplifies the signal by about a thousand times the signal comes in here and it goes out here and then we hook our radio detector to this output coax here this other wire here uh, supplies uh, power to power the amplifier as it is uh, we have about 12 volts DC input coming in here okay so basically this little device here is the actual receiver that we hook our output signal to from the uh, antenna this is called a software defined radio dongle this is uh, a device that plugs into the USB port of a personal computer. For example, we could plug it in here and we can use software to communicate with it and set it up to receive the signal that we want, that we're looking for. But I have decided that I don't want to plug it in that way. I want, it, I want the device to be very close to the antenna because that improves the noise performance of the system when I do that that way. So I just screw the coax in just like this and then I bring a long coax or a USB cable from the device and then I plug it in to my laptop over here. Next thing I need I need to connect power to the preamp through this fairly long wire. Just plug it in right here, like that. So there, that's the. Uh, those are the connections at the uh, horn itself. Okay, so now we have this set up, uh, powered up, assembled, and in operation. We started the software. On the uh, this is a Linux computer running Ubuntu and we're running an application called GNU radio that communicates with our receiver over here at the horn itself the display on the laptop here it's a little hard to see here but we will have some screenshots of it for you to look at um, this is the signal and we're on the horizontal axis we're displaying frequency and then on the vertical axis this is relative strength so if you can see this right here we have a little bit of a bump here and that is the signature of the hydrogen atom in space now to make it a little bit easier to see we can do signal averaging what's called averaging and we're averaging 40 some signals over time here and as you can see, this allows our signal to show up a lot better. Okay, in this slide, we're showing the output that the operator sees on the laptop. This is uh, the output from the radio telescope. The dark green line here is the actual signal from the receiver. We have frequency. Uh, scale along the bottom and then on the y-axis we were showing relative power 
So this is a fairly noisy signal, and what we have here is the uh, signature of hydrogen. Basically, it shows up as a bump along here. Now, it's not very clear here because the uh, signal is pretty noisy, but you can see a little, little bit of a rise here. Now here, in this shot, we're using the averaging function of the software and the receive signal of the H1 line, the hydrogen line, is much more prominent. So this is how we use the radio telescope to detect hydrogen emissions from the Milky Way galaxy. So in conclusion, I'd like uh, to invite you to visit us at mcmathholbert.org for more information on how to build a radio telescope. We're very happy to help everybody who wants to do this, especially students. So again, pay us a visit, mcmathholbert.org. Thank you.